Hello, everybody, and welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or of course, if you are watching on our fast growing YouTube channel, that is Tar Hill Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me, as he always does, THI publisher Andrew Jones and AJ here for a special edition in a lot of ways of the THI podcast. We're going to be talking about Drake May, his Heisman campaign, what it's going to take for him to have a chance to win it in New York here on December 10th, not too far away from that Heisman announcement, less than a month away now. So exciting time for the program, exciting time for, for Drake May to even be in consideration for this, much less, you know, we saw Sam Howell last year, kind of before the season started being talked about. Now you're seeing a guy, Carolina quarterback, the season after being in heavy consideration towards the end of the year. And that's a credit to what Carolina has been able to do sitting number 13 in the country right now, nine and one, six and zero in ACC play. And also having won the Coastal against Wake Forest. Um, I'll run into some stats here in a second. I don't want to be too stat heavy in this podcast because I think yeah. people get a little bit too bogged down. We could sit, sit here and compare his stats to, you know, uh, CJ Stroud and other guys that are in contention, the TCU quarterback and Max Duggan. I don't think we need to do that. We're going to talk about here why Drake's in consideration, why he should be in New York, and what it's going to take for him to have a legitimate chance at winning this. So AJ, when you look back, I always look back and, and circle back to the conversation. I'll never forget it that we had during, I think it was Carolina's open practice during, it was either during the fall second or during practice, the spring. Yeah. yeah. Second, second practice. We, we were up in the football center when we did it. Yeah. And we had this conversation. I think you came up to him and you're like, he's the best quarterback Carolina's ever had. And I was at the yeah. time, I was like, that's a bold statement, but I, but I trust your word more than anybody's because of how long you've been covering and been doing this and, and being a sports writer. And, I mean, AJ, you were completely spot on with that. He's been absolutely fantastic this year, and he's been so, so impressive with what he's been able to do. So when you look back at, you know, the fall and in the spring, watching Drake May in practice and kind of seeing that potential to where he is now, are, are you at all surprised at just how good he has been this season in yeah. his redshirt freshman campaign, first year starting for the Tar Heels? Or did you kind of see it coming in some ways? Because I, like I said, you hit the nail on the head before the season even started. Yeah, I'm not going to say I saw Heisman talk coming. Yeah, I mean, that would be, be a bold statement. That yeah. would be a lie. <laughs> but I will say this, and I got to lump Dean into this one too, because Dean has been all over Drake for years. Yeah. And and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way whatsoever, but she and I both said, and you know we said this privately and didn't really want to say it publicly, but the best thing was for Sam to move on. Because his stock was what it was, get to the NFL, he was going to make a roster and learn how to play NFL football, and they need to get Drake on the field. And um, Dean and I have said for a few years that Sam was sort of this program's Taj Boyd when he was to Clemson, and that Drake, from a performance standpoint, had to be clear, was could be their Deshaun Watson. So mm -hmm. that's what we're seeing play out. You know that we've said this a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. I've told you that thousands of times. Yeah. So I go back to the spring. I guess, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of opportunities to watch them because the, the, the main media, we were covering the basketball team, mm -hmm. go to the national title game. So we had an open practice like the following Saturday or something, a Saturday after the Final Four. And I'm sitting next to Dean in the stands because uh, we we weren't allowed on the field for that. We were we had to stay in the stands. And Drake had a play where he ran the ball, ran around left end and his stride. And I said to Dean, I said, the stride. She goes, I told you. <laughs> so he's got everything. I've done a lot of radio shows in the last few months and last couple of months and a lot recently. And everyone wants to ask about Drake. And I tell them all the same thing. He literally checks every box for a quarterback. There is no box. There is no box that you would have that a quarterback either needs to have or you would want a quarterback to have that Drake doesn't check. He checks every one of them. Mm -hmm. Nobody can tell me, AJ, here's a box he doesn't check because it doesn't exist because he checks every one of them. He's got high-end athletic ability he's got a high-end arm he can throw the deep ball he can throw the mid-range stuff he can throw the short stuff he can throw the middle he can throw wide he hits guys in strides he, he's so good at hitting receivers you know uh, uh, on the outside of it needs to be on the outside on the inside of it needs to be on the inside giving them a chance to catch the ball that's what a quarterback's job is the, the ball that he threw to Antoine Green 
in the first half when Antoine turned and jumped up and caught it, and he was very well defended. It's a great pass. People are like, oh, he, he underthrew it. No, it's, he gave a really good receiver who has a knack for making great catches a chance to make a great catch. That's his job as a quarterback, and that's what Drake does. He makes so many good decisions. He did make one bad decision the other night when he took the sack on first and goal at the five, and that was something that Mac and Phil talked about and Drake talked about on Tuesday. But, yeah, I I, I had I thought he'd be really, really good. Dean and I both said a couple of times we thought he would end up being the best quarterback in school history. Sam was incredible. But Drake's just kind of higher end in pretty much every area than Sam. Yeah, And That's everyone's seen it now. Well, you know, early on when you and I were doing some of these pods, Jacob, I, I was very cautious about saying he's better than Sam because I didn't want I didn't want to overdo it too early. Mm-hmm. And we want we need to see him play power five teams, but it was very obvious to me from day one that he's just got more stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that because you know, there are a lot of guys who are there there's 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 a lot of guys who are real good players, and then there's Michael Jordan. Yeah, there's a lot true. of hockey players that are really good. And then there's Wayne Gretzky, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean so mm-hmm. he's on the higher end of that. And I think he's someone that's going to have an incredible career. There was a scout at the game at Wake. who well, after a throw Drake made in the third quarter, it was a touchdown pass early in the third quarter. He's got, said, okay, seen enough left. <laughs> I I'm, I'm just, he was right. Sit right. Uh, oh, sit right no, for me. I think it was, test. I think it was Cleveland Browns. That's fantastic. He's, I, I've seen enough. I don't need to see more of this kid. <laughs> uh, the, he he's the number one pick, and oh, no doubt there are a lot of people that think he'd be the number one pick this year if he could come out. Mm-hmm. So as far as the Heisman goes, it's because of all those things. I find it really interesting, and I'm not a big monitor social media guy. I don't really have time, but I have been monitoring the last couple of weeks, and it's fascinating how the national discourse has gone from, oh yeah, that May guy, yeah, he's pretty good. Mm-hmm to suddenly people now, watch yeah. him. Like a lot of people watch that Wake Forest game because mm-hmm. they they got to see him on the road against a good team, team that's got a lot of respect, and he was incredible. And now yeah. people have ascended him to the top spot or the number two spot, maybe three and some. And there's a lot of, um, you know, couch podcasters, if you will, that are putting stuff out there that suddenly they're Drake May experts. Mm-hmm. And I find it fascinating. But it, it it's because he consistently plays at an extraordinarily high level. And every game he does wow stuff. And we've seen it for 10 games. So it's not surprising to us anymore. It doesn't, we don't really look at each other and say, holy crap, like we no. were earlier in the year. Well, the nation is now saying, holy crap, because the nation is now making a concerted effort to watch this kid. Mm-hmm. And that's why he's ascending in this award, because they've seen Stroud. They've seen uh, Bryce Young. They've seen Duggan. They've seen a lot of these other. They've seen Hooker. Some remember him from Virginia Tech when that was a mess, and they've seen him with Tennessee. Now they're watching May. He's the new flavor. He's kind of doing what Kenny Pickett did last year. People didn't really pay attention to him until about the beginning of November. Yeah, and then he and came then, on. Boom, yeah. He took off. Drake's doing sort of the same thing. So hmm. uh, he's worthy of being there. I don't know if he's going to win it. I don't – we can get into that here in a few minutes, but yeah. um, he is absolutely worthy of where he is right now in the discussion. There's no doubt about it. And I, before I dive into the stat, I think one of the most impressive, I've been talking about this. I don't know if we've talked about it on camera, maybe a little bit, but I've talked about this to some Carolina fans. And I think to you off camera a lot over the past few weeks is I've had the opportunity this year, as many of you guys know, to to be on the field during games and shoot videos where i I do essentially, anytime I'm on the field, I do kind of the best offensive plays of the game. So what I'm essentially doing is staring at Drake May through a camera screen on field level all game. And one of the most impressive things for me that I, I didn't really see out of Sam is no disrespect to Sam. And I wasn't on the field during the Trubisky era, but I always go back to being in the stands during that 2016 season. And that was one of the most, and I've said it since then, it's one of the most impressive seasons I've seen from a Carolina quarterback and I've you know been going to Carolina games for a very long time um at least in terms of my age um and I just thought he was so impressive that year as well with the things he was able to do but one thing that stands out about Drake that I haven't seen with the Carolina quarterback in my lifetime especially covering the Tar Heels is he just makes everything look so effortless and easy I I, I think I've used this analogy but it, it honestly never feels in a lot of situations like he even has to get out of second gear to do what he's doing and 
because you'll watch some players and, and, and they're really good players, but it's like they're trying their absolute hardest. They're grinding. They're working as hard as they can. They make it. They, they look like they're working as hard as they can and having to do so to be really good out there. And it's not the Drake's out there, you know, for lack of a better word, just going through the motions. He's not. He wouldn't be able to do this and be that good. It's just his demeanor and the way he, in which he plays just it looks like it just it, it comes easy. It's second nature to him, and I think that's why he's such a good quarterback. Do you agree with that from what you've seen? Just I know you haven't been on the field level a lot during games, but just being at every game and being in the press box and having covered so many good quarterbacks in your time as a journalist, do you kind of get that vibe from watching him as well? Yeah, what you're saying is he's in full control out there. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. He's Thank in you. total exactly. control. I mean, yes. he is the most – his mind is the most organized mind on the field. Mm-hmm. His body is the most organized body on the field because they work together, right? Mm-hmm. Um, his his ability to go through progressions, his 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 ability to know when to take off. He had a the touchdown run at Wake, the well, when he rolled out to his right. You could see him as he's rolling go through his progression, and then the seam opened and he just took off, and he didn't want to throw into coverage. He's like, you know what? I can get there because he's got an extraordinary amount of confidence. And he knew he could get there, and he's a really good athlete. And he, and he's a dart runner. Like if he if he's at the twelve, and he turns, and he's going to get to the end zone. He gets to the end zone. Like he's beeline to the end zone, and he just appears quicker. You know, he, he's quicker. Excuse me, he's quicker than he may appear. I, I think a lot of guys misjudge him. They, their angles are not great because they don't realize he's as quick and fast as he is because he's got that great stride and it's a strong stride. So he, that's an advantage of his. He's really good running in the red zone in those situations. He's really good at running up the middle when things break down because he's got that. And he's got that little extra giddy up getting through the second level. So, um, yeah, he, he's in total control out there. And he sees everything. He's so well prepared. Um, he's in sync with a, with a guy that we're going to have to discuss as maybe – the greatest wide receiver in Carolina history, yeah, Josh Downs. Uh, he's in sync with. He's had different running backs. Different. He's had four starting running backs. Mm-hmm. And you know when you're when you're in that kind of offense, you have to have chemistry with your running backs. And the, remember the the fumble at, at Duke when uh, uh, um, Caleb Hood knocked his hand. Sam took responsibility for that because he should have known where Caleb was. So everybody's a little bit different how they go about things. And he's had to deal with that. He's had to deal with his t- primary receivers being out for a couple of games and uh, Antoine for three. And then Antoine went out early in the Wake Forest game. Uh, he just keeps on rolling, man. Kobe Pesor, Gavin Blackwell, no problem. Yeah. Oh, Bryson Nesbitt's out. Well, Copenhaver's going to play 40, uh, 48 snaps. No problem. He's in total control in the field. Yeah. It's impressive, man. It, it really is. That's exactly the word I'm looking for. So I appreciate you, you filling in my the words right there for me. AJ, I'm going to I want to dive into some stats. I know I don't want to be too statistically heavy, but I do want to throw some Drake May stats out there. And then we'll talk the last thing we'll talk about here after that, about kind of what it's going to take for him to have a legitimate chance at winning this here in, in about a month. But thrown for 3,412 yards, third nationally, 34 touchdowns, tied for first in the country, and just three interceptions that's tied for 12th nationally completed 70.1% of his passes. That's fifth best in the country and thrown for 300 yards or more in seven of UNC's 10 games. You talked about running backs as well, AJ. I think this is another thing that really speaks volumes. He hasn't really had a consistent back right back there. He could reply on because of injuries and youth and all that jazz. He actually leads the team in rushing right now with 584 rushing yards on the team. So statistically so many other stats I could go into and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably follow PFF on Twitter as well they'll put out stats during the week where you know leads the country in these specific stats I'm I'm not saying he does but just throwing something out here like you know passes of 20 more yards down the field stats like that that you have to look a little bit more into to get he's very very elite in those stats as well there's not really a stat in passing nationally or anything like that offensive related that he isn't in the top 10 for it feels like, or even the top five in a lot of situations, he's been that good this season. So with all that in mind, with Carolina sitting as they are right now at nine and one, six and no, having a chance to play Clemson here in a few weeks for the ACC title, what is it going to take in your eyes for Drake may 
to have a chance not only to go to New York, but to be a legit to potentially win this thing. Because I think Mac Brown said it on Monday. It's pretty simple in a lot of ways. He said the Heisman's a team award. And what he means by that is if you want your guy to have any chance of winning it, you have to keep winning as a team. That's a big, big factor in this. You can't be six and six and have the best quarterback in the country. It doesn't matter. He's not going to be in contention for it. So I think that's a big factor as well. But in your eyes, AJ, what is it going to take for Sam, uh, not Sam Howe, Drake May to have a legitimate shot of winning this thing here on December 10th? They have to win out. No doubt about it. First. Yep. And no I think they it. have to win out convincingly. If you go to our Georgia Tech preview pod, like they have to, they have to hammer them. Mm-hmm. Hammer. And then he's going to face two, the two most physical defenses in the ACC. Mm-hmm. He'll face one at state. They're going to be out to get him. You know that Peyton Wilson and Drake Thomas are licking their chops to pop Drake. So he's going to face two really good defenses in, in the last two of these three games. So if he if he goes for 350 or 400 against each of them, three or four touchdowns, no picks, and they win, that's the kind of stuff that will have him in New York. He'll, I think he'll be there for sure if that happens. Now, in order to get there, People say you're an invite. You have to be in the top four of the voting. Mm-hmm. So, but but the thing about it is, is that everyone's got to watch the Clemson game. It's prime time ABC, and it'll be two. If they both win out, it'll be two top ten teams. So it'll be an important game. And and the Wake Forest or the NC State game is three thirty ABC exclusive. Day after Thanksgiving, no one's working. Yeah. So Thank his you. last two games are going to be on ABC exclusive. And it's going to have it. It gets good defenses, and I think that people nationally respect NC State. They know that they're good defensively, so he has a chance to really get some 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 wow performances against good defenses. That's what it's going to take. But they must win. They have to destroy Georgia Tech, in my opinion, because the team has to get a little bit more credibility. I know the thirteenth and CFP, but a lot of people just they're not buying them. And I can understand why they're not buying him. So because they're not buying him, it kind of brings Drake down a little bit in the, in, in the eyes of some people because he's he wears that uniform. He's poor. Oh well, he, he's racking up yards because he can't crush anybody. There, every he plays all four quarters every game, so of course he's racking up yards. Well, he's probably thrown more pressure passes than any quarterback in the country this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has to win with a defense that is going to give up a five play, eighty yard drive at any time. So. I think there's that's the other way of looking at it. Who's completed more pressure passes? Who is who else has led his team to six road wins? Nobody. They're the yeah. only team in the nation with six road wins. So he's got some stuff going for him already. But Jacob, they have to win out, and they have to look really good doing so. And he has to be spectacular. If he closes out these next four with 1,100 yards, you know, 10 to 12 touchdowns and no ints, and they win then he'll be in New York for sure. I don't know if he's going to win it. I I just think it's a long shot for him to win it because there are a lot of people that don't respect the ACC and they're going to factor that into the equation. Even if he's really good against Clemson, they're going to think, oh, well, Notre Dame punk Clemson. And Notre Dame punk Carolina and Chapel Hill. They're not that good. So next year, I think it sets him up to be the front runner going into next season for sure. Yeah, there'll be a lot of hype around him. For sure. Real quickly, AJ, I want to do give a shout out to our sponsor on this podcast before we wrap this one up here in a second. I do have one thing I want to talk about after, but rogueshop.com. You guys know we absolutely love them. Check them out at the Rogue Shop. Um, specializing in top shelf family grown hemp products, CBD, Delta 8, Delta 9, tinctures, oils, gummies, candies, whatever the heck you're looking for. Creams as well. I know a lot of people use the the the, the CBD cream right. for the shoulder. I know you do. My parents love it as well. Heck, my fiance uses it as well for some pains that she has. So absolutely fantastic stuff. I'm not just saying that. I truly mean that. Having tried some of the products, it's it yeah. really is top shelf stuff. When I do say it's, they specialize in top shelf hit products, it's the best of the best. Use the promo code TARHEELS10 to save on your order. I'll put the link in the description below to head on over to rogueshop.com. AJ, last thing I want to ask you, I know you mentioned winning out. Do they... Let's say Drake has a big game again. I'm just throwing this out there. Let's say Drake has a, a, a big game against Clemson statistically and Carolina loses 48-42. Does that ruin his chances or do they have to just win every game moving forward for him to have any chance because of kind of where they're at on the national stage in terms of respect right now? 
I would think so because he could be going up against a guy like Stroud whose team could be unbeaten. I mean, he has a big game against Michigan. That's going to be his wow moment. That's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, Hooker is going to be in there. Some of these other guys are going to have really, really big-time opportunities as well. So I think they need to win out. And and I don't think – the thing about it is is he's not stressing about the Heisman. One of the things that really impresses me about Drake – and Tuesday, if you haven't seen our – the, the media session with Drake on Tuesday, you need to watch it. There was the, it was the largest media contingency I've seen for a Tuesday evening player interview session. And it was rapid fire. All questions about the Heisman. How many Jeremy people? Jeremy Sharp. About 18, maybe. That's, that's, that's pretty dang good. 15, for 18 for a Tuesday. Tuesday Usually the Tuesdays are about eight, maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeremy Sharp, who is the, the media relations director and in charge of branding for the football program, at one point, about 12 minutes in, says, hey, any of you guys have any questions about Georgia Tech? <laughs> and I actually did. And I and in the middle really? of that, I did ask him about the the, the drive where they got the field goal, the game-winning field goal, about how Max said they messed it up because they had first and goal at the five and ended up kicking a field goal. But other than that, it was all Heisman stuff. And Drake just – he handled it really, really well. Mm-hmm. And it's just – it's. It's not cliched player speak when he's like, you know, I'm just focusing on Georgia Tech. People say that that's the case, but that's really who Drake is. Uh, he's he's a tunnel vision guy. He he knows that the next step is the most important step because none of that stuff happens unless you're really good at the next step. And he's, yeah. he, he said, yeah, we finally got him to kind of say, yeah, it'd be really cool to win it. He thought about it before when he was a kid. You know, in high school, it'd be really neat to be that guy, but it's you don't think it's really going to be something that's going to happen, especially as fast as it is, as it has. I think Jordan Kramer asked him a question about, you know, in August you're battling for the starting quarterback job, and here you are three months later, one of the leading candidates for the Heisman Trophy. It happened real fast, I and mean, he did say, "Yeah, it happened overnight. Basically, it happened real fast." And that probably is partly why it's not really affecting him too much because he. You know, Sam may have felt some pressure going in last year because it was talked about all off season. So, it, it, you know, how you start your season, whatever your disposition is there, often affects how you handle things throughout the course of a year. The basketball team right now is a perfect example of that. They're starting yeah. this year in a completely different place as individuals and as a team than a year ago. So they are a new team. It is a, a, a new launching point. So Drake will have a different launching point next year than he had this year. And maybe next year he feels a little bit more. But now... It's. I think it's all gravy. He he mm-hmm. understands just win, and he's such a competitive dude. He's got like Hansbro esque competitiveness. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've been I'm saying that for a that. while, and it's and it's real. And you know, Tyler was the happiest guy on the planet when they won a national title in two thousand nine, and Tyler Lawson was ACC Player of the Year that year, and he didn't care. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just wanted to win. So Drake is the same kind of guy. So um, they got to win out. He's going to handle it well one way or the other, uh, wh- whether he does or not. And it's it's fascinating to be covering the evolution of all this here over the last three months. And there might be a lot more cool stuff to cover moving forward. Personally, I've never covered a Heisman Trophy winner you know, on a regular basis. So for me, it's kind of neat to actually be writing Heisman stories. I haven't yeah. really done a whole lot of that in my life. So yeah. Yeah, I have. think it's kind of neat. And I think the other media covering, we're not rooting for him at all. I don't think anybody that is on the beat roots one way or the other. But if he does end up in New York, if he does win it, and this team does win a lot more games, it, it'd be pretty cool to cover something like that for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Last thing, AJ, I, I just thought about this. You've covered so many, you know, especially covering Carolina over the years, so many high-level college athletes in football and basketball. Um do you do you think he likes the attention? Because it, it it almost seems like he, I don't I don't think he necessarily dislikes it, but it it doesn't really seem like he cares either way. Do you kind of get that vibe from him? Yeah, he's not a this kind of guy. Bring yeah, that yeah yeah. He's one of the guys. And by the way, I did cover one Heisman winner, but I was after one. I covered Cam Newton's first three years of the Panthers. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so technically I did, but not in the Heisman year. Yeah, no. Uh, I know yeah. Drake's one of the guys. He just wants to be one of the dudes. One of the guys in the locker room. He doesn't mm-hmm. want – he's not the guy that wants the special parking place and everyone else has to park back there. No, he he's not the that. guy that, that, want, that gets the bigger locker. Everything is closer to this, and he's treated differently. He doesn't want that. Mm-hmm. He's not one of those kind of guys. He's – he is – if you ever played sports, and you did, but I'm talking to people who are watching, that whole locker room, just one of the dudes, 
just being yeah. one of the dudes. There, there's a locker room dynamic that if you haven't experienced it, you have no idea. It's a different universe and it's a pretty cool universe. And it's one of the things that most athletes, when they retire or stop playing, whether it's from high school or professionally, it's what they miss most. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think no that Drake absolutely loves those minutes where they're just sitting around the football center and they're in the locker room or whatever the case may be. And they're just being dudes. Mm -hmm. So some guys are bringing on, I want all the attentions. Give me nine spotlights. Uh, He's not that kind of guy. No, he he definitely doesn't give off that vibe. And if you've been in his press conference or watched any of them, I think you'd agree with that wholeheartedly as well. But AJ, good place to wrap this one up. Always enjoy talking a little Carolina football. And like I said, fun conversation to have here. I know we had a little preseason chats with Sam Howell last year about it. We haven't really had to have a podcast like this you know, 10 games in where we're talking about a guy potentially being in New York and winning the Heisman Trophy for what he's done for the Tar Heels. So, yeah, it'll be fun to see what happens over the last, next few weeks. But like you said, I don't think anything's in doubt with Carolina's got to win out, keep winning somewhat convincingly in some of these games as well for Drake, Drake to have a chance at winning it in New York on December 10th. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones for yet another episode of the THI Podcast. Let's do this. If you think Drake should win the Heisman, as I'm sure many Carolina fans do, or if you think he will, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up below. Let's see how many likes we can run up on this one. And make sure you check out RogueShop.com. Link is in the description below. Fantastic company and and really glad to be continuing to sponsor with them. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.